I've got my A-team squad here, making sure that I'm looking the part for our very, very, very new series of The Wellness Couch. Um, talking to an incredible, incredible scientist. Girl from the hood. So when I get my face beat on, you just enjoy the transformation. Who said doctors need to be dull, eh, Jackie? Man. So we are ready to rock and roll. I certainly, hopefully, am going to be having a wonderful, wonderful time. I guarantee you that you will have a great time. So ready. Thanks to Jackie for this incredible face beat. I was ready, my team is ready. Welcome to the brand new series of The Wellness Couch. Let's go. month of June it's youth month it's wellness get back on track month we are back with a brand new series of the wellness couch and I'm so excited about bringing you a brand new fresh vitality infused series where you're going to enjoy not just learning about your health but meeting people like you and me who are juggling all kinds of careers proudly saying that that is also my home goal so i'm really really excited to have on board especially in celebrating youth month who better than a fellow scientist to kick off this show so nonim tonu is i don't even know where to start with, with the academic achievements of this wonderful lady she has a phd in climate change and ecology i'm telling you you need to go to it. <laughs> but welcome to the wellness couch thank you so much for having me so that brings me to the journey of you becoming a doctor in climate change and colleges. Take me to the young Doni, where you grew up, what made you fall in love with this particular scientific field, um, and how did we get to the PhD? Because a lot of people looking at you, and even myself looking at you, way too young for PhD. And PhDs, we think it's like people in their 50s, 60s. So take us through that journey of growing up and deciding that science is your passion. Um, well, I made a mistake in going in. Oh, really? And I thought that I wanted to get Okay. So then I got into microbiology. Okay. I didn't enjoy it. And then after doing a year and a half of microbiology, I decided actually I need a, I need a break and I need to reflect back onto what is it that I'm actually supposed to do and what is it that I'm actually passionate about doing. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to do environmental sciences. How did you know that the thing you're gonna be passionate about, I guess, for lack of a better phrase? is environmental science. So it was exposure, exposure and more exposure. And I was with my aunts and we took a drive to the Midlands in Maritzburg and we were at a, a farm there near Sedara. And there um, I saw they make an organic milkshake from strawberries into the tree I love. And I thought this world is so authentic, so real, so genuine that I actually want to understand, you know, how does it actually run and maintain itself. And this is literally just the, the earth and its natural state. So I'm glad that we're hitting on something very close to the conversations that we have at the Wellness Couch, which is the whole authentic journey of the world and how we should be eating essentially from the earth. Um, how are you trying to keep um, to that nutritional model? And, and how well are you thinking you're doing? Because a lot of people will say, look, it's incredibly hard um, to buy fresh, freshly produced food um, and also trying to make food. One of the biggest uh, complaints I get from people who are busy, we're all busy by the way, so I always tell my clients. Um, how do you find time to stick to the policy of trying to eat from the earth? So I think it's very hard to, to keep as organic and as healthy as it is um, in the current time because okay. of the demand that we have on it. Never mind that, um, it's very expensive to actually be organic and to, to be natural in that state. So really? It's a very, it's a, it's a concern in a way that okay. if you want to go organic or healthy, it's mm -hmm. actually more expensive for you to do that than for you to just go buy deep fried chips. So what I actually do is, there is an online farming system where they actually sell fresh vegetables. Okay, and tell these, us about that. So this um, young man, 
goes and collects <laughs> um, vegetables from small scale farmers and then okay. he sells them online okay. and he delivers it free to you depending on your location. So on Tuesdays he deliver in Johannesburg, maybe Thursdays he delivers in Pretoria. And you can order boxes that you can get from um, the same as food lovers. Yes, market. yes, a retail box online, like that. But it's cutting down the middleman of that of that big shop okay. and you're instantly buying from a small scale farmer. Okay. That way you're saving Time mm -hmm. and pollution, car pollution, and driving okay. to the store to get your vegetables. That's a and fair also point. at the same time, you've got these fresh vegetables while supporting young farmers or black farmers or small scale farmers, which are the least supported farmers in the industry. Right. So this way is a good way for you to be organic, save the environment, mm -hmm. as well as support local business. What are we looking at, baby? So a box. Um, depending on the size of family you're trying to feed. Right. For myself, I buy a, a medium box. And you're looking at probably 300, 350 for a box. Okay. For me. And I still have those vegetables to today. It's been okay. three weeks that I've had them. So the medium box can last you a good two to three yeah, weeks. Two to three weeks alone. alone. And obviously in a family yeah. setting, then you're looking yeah. at about that. Like a week or two home. weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So still no excuses. Still within a, a very affordable budget. Let's go to something that I'm very keen to understand about you from a wellness and purity point of view. What does wellness mean to you? Wellness means that I am, what I put into my mouth is clean and it brings good out of me. I do take a whole lot of vitamins, not a whole lot. I take one vitamin a day <laughs> and I take my omega-3. Okay. And I gym maybe twice to three times a week. Okay. And I do moss now. I do green tea and vinegar. I, I really, really try my best okay. to stay healthy. Right. So I found that when I do not go to gym or when I eat junk food or whatever the case may be, when I'm sitting in my office, I'm so frustrated mm -hmm. and I'm unhappy and I, and I don't feel good about my body. Yeah. So I, I make it, I make a cautious, a conscious decision to make sure that Whatever that I put in my mouth is, is, is green. If I have a cheat day, I have a cheat day once in a while. Right. But I always try to balance it out with beetroot juice, carrot juice. I always try my best to be as organic as I can. So for me as an environmentalist, I've been more aware of the, the nature and how to appreciate it in its natural state without actually damaging it in its natural state. Never mind that, to understand the language of what the universe or the or earth tells you. So if you see instances like droughts or air pollution or um, flooding that's going on right now, that's, that's the environment speaking to us and saying that there is a major way that we are not treating the environment the way that it gives us back. So it's made me more aware on how I decide to throw away the time while I'm driving on the on, on the freeway right. or to use a plastic straw or whatever the case may be, but a huge understanding in that this is a two-way relationship, it's not a one-way relationship. Like I said, this series has always been about making sure that as citizens, we equip ourselves with the right information, with the right inspiration to live healthier lives. And we have got to make this a day-to-day -day commitment. If you thought that there were enough nerds in the world, there is still more to come.